Hi everyone, it's Arthur here at Arthur Ease Your Mind on YouTube and ArthurEaseYourMind.com. I'm an intuitive consultant and psychic advisor, and I'm losing my voice. Anyway, hi. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the love and support you've given me to get this channel going. Also, the likes, the shares, and most of all, the subscribers. And if you're not subscribed yet, please do. It's free. What do you have to lose? And as many cast vets would say, ah, oh, come on. You can do it. So I was going to start this on Thursday. So there isn't a delay. But I was going to start this on Thursday. And all of a sudden, I realized there was the debate between little Ron, don't say gay to Satan, and Governor Gazam Newsom of California. So I decided to watch that. Now, the debate was not through two people. It was three. We had Hannity and Ron DeSantis ganging up on Gavin Newsom. But Gavin Newsom schooled them, put them in their place. And basically, I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. Why? Well, here's the reason. It was a train wreck. Really? I mean... Every five minutes, when any of her question was asked, little Ron would keep on saying, but everybody's leaving California. Really? Everybody's leaving California to go to Florida. Really? And that's when Governor Newsom just turned around and said, actually, people are leaving Florida to come to California. And he had the facts. Everything that Ron was spewing was all just lies, 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 lies. I mean, I was wondering why his pants weren't fire, but then I fi finally realized he was probably peeing himself. And we know that, you know, wet fabric doesn't really ignite unless she's gasoline. Just a thought. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> so Sean Hannity was doing everything the way he asked questions to pump up and make Ron, it's like, Ron, what's two plus two? Gatham, what's the prime third of 779,000? Whatever, I'm not a mathematician, so don't ask me if that was in correct equations, but you get my drift. It was nuts. But like I said, Newsom schooled him. And the best was when Ron DeSantis brought up that Newsom used to be the governor of, quote unquote, one of the greatest cities that used to be in America, San Francisco, and then held up a poop map. Yes, a map where human feces have been found. That's all he had to say. And when he started saying that, you know, murders and everyone's afraid in California and women, <clears throat> he said when they were doing the debate in uh, the Ronald Reagan Museum, women were coming up to him saying, oh, my God, I have to go shopping, but I have to take off all my jewelry. I'm so scared. Really? I guess these women don't shop on Rodeo Drive or to Beverly Center or the Grove, or the Galleria. I mean, I guess you ask scared little racist people, something like that, and they'll tell you that that's how they'll see the world. But it's not, that is not the world. I mean, I'm getting tired of watching the news and saying, like, San Francisco, Los Angeles, are under siege. I mean, my... Relatives keep on calling me, you're in Los Angeles. Oh my God, the homeless people. Oh my God, the crime. Oh my, really? What about in Tennessee? What about Mississippi? What about in Tallahassee? Florida has more of a murder rate than California does. And again, while he was holding up that little poop map, if I were Gavin, Gavin Newsom, I would have been holding up a map showing all the deaths of COVID thanks to Ron DeSantis. Just saying. But if you didn't see it, basically towards the end, this is this is the clip I want to share. What 
what's missing in this picture? The goose. And here it is, all juicy and brown and ready to eat. We're cooking a goose today on the French chef. So yeah, basically, Ron DeSantis, his little goose was cooked. Thanks to Gavin Newsom. And thank you, Julia Child. So moving on. Here's another segment that I want to add. I've done this once before. Believe me, many times when us psychics get something wrong, people remind us and remind us and remind us. But when we're right, I like to remind you. So this section I'm going to call Fragment. Yes, little Georgie, Porgy, pumpkin pie, kissed the boys and made them cry. Or girls, or whatever. Anyway, he's gone. I predicted this back in March, that he'd be gone by the end of the year. And he is. December. And I said it would be December. Well, here it is December 1st. And I said it would be an early Christmas present. Well, here it is. Ta-da! So, yeah. He was... Oh, God. The fact that, I mean... A lot of the Republicans, the GOP, really, really wanted to keep him in place because of his one vote. But others had just had enough. So he's gone. In fact, I think it was within an hour of him leaving, they had already changed the locks on his doors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It also came out that he had taken the gov- taken a congressman in Florida and charged over $3,300 on his charge card and over $3,300 on his mother's charge card. And they had to pay like thousands of dollars in legal fees to get this removed. Yet, oh, they still want him as a member of the House. What's wrong with these people? Come on. Uh, oh, I, they did get a picture of him the minute the vote was taken. The minute the vote came in at 311 to 114. Want to see it? Here it is. Yes, he's toast. I guess we should call him George DeSantis. Toast. I couldn't help myself. Sorry. Okay. Bragging rights number two. I had said a while back that the gag order against Donald Trump that had been temporarily lifted would be reinstated. And it was. And he is kind of mad. I mean, the guy's nuts. He's going to say whatever he wants anyway. I mean, the only way you're going to gag him is if you do this. Wouldn't it be nice to have silence out of that man's mouth for once? For once. And speaking of Trump, Angelic Alchemy asks, my question is regarding the Orange Menace's legal team in the New York civil trial. Will Haba, Keys, and company face legal issues for their conduct in the civil case? I mean, how many lawyers do you need, do you know that would create the media circus they have created by taunting the judge, ridiculing the law clerk, and pretty much repeating MAGA lies? Well, you do know what MAGA stands for. Make attorneys get attorneys. Their are is against them too. So it's not a pretty sight. Hunter Biden. Now, I said several months ago that Hunter Biden was going to come out swinging and he was not going to take any prisoners. Well, apparently that's what's going on here. Um, The GOP, apparently. um, Well, Sylvia asks, hi, Arthur, Hunter Biden, James Comer, who will win? Hunter Biden agrees to testify publicly before House Oversight Committee. James Comer rejected it. Please tell me Hunter will sue the Oversight Committee. Thank you. I don't know if he can sue the Oversight Committee. I don't know anything about that, to be honest with you. However, 
they wanted to basically embarrass him and put him in an oversight committee and ask him questions. And he agreed to it. But he said he wanted it to be done in public. No hidden back room in public. And they freaked out. And they rejected it. That, oh, no, we're going to do this behind closed doors. Why? What state secrets does Hunter Biden have to reveal? None. But anyway, that's just their games. It's just games. It's theater. Theater of the absurd. Theater. I'd rather watch Theater of Blood with Vincent Price, to be honest with you. But anyway, and then Lisa Ann asks, will Comer Pyle, James Comer, ever have any consequences for his actions regarding pretty much everything, including Hunter Biden? And maybe a bigger question, will bold-faced lies ever be frowned upon in Congress? To politicians, what do you think? I wish, but not really. I mean, the bold-faced lies may simmer down a bit because... You know, when the orange tornado is not there anymore, you know, and he sucked up all the, and he takes all the oxygen out of the room, they can't say much. So there you go. Now, I have been predicting, now this hasn't come yet, but I am predicting little Tommy Tupperville. By the end of the year, it's like the end of this month, I do feel that the blockade of military promotions, his little one man band against, you know, the military is, machine is going to come to an end if it doesn't happen by the end of this month the end of the year by the end of january it'll be taken care of that's the way i read it okay so keep our eyes out on that one now victoria i forecast on oh victoria forecast on political events for the rest of 2023 do i have to really it's gonna be much, it's gonna be just like it is now. I'd be right. I'd rather watch, you know, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer with Burl Ives or watch Santa Claus coming down the slope with on a uh, electric razor than watch this crap. And they've always say, stop watching the news all the time. Really, because especially Fox, Newsmax, and other places similar, because they're not reporting the truth. They're reporting what they're being told to report. Why? For ratings. Ratings equals numbers. Numbers equals money for advertising. So it's all game to them. They care less who really wins as long as they're making money. They say it like that, but that's the way I see it. So. From... Sue, will Trump be the Republican nominee for the 2024 presidential election? If not, who do you see as the Republican ticket on the Republican ticket? I've been saying this for quite some time now that this man's too, like, you know, a Diet Coke and a cheeseburger away from a heart attack. I don't wish anybody ill will, but then again, you need a heart to die. But Sorry, Tin Man. But at the same time, I've often felt he's not going to make it. I mean, I once muttered under a breath on the first show we did with Linda that you have to be alive to be a president. I don't see him crossing the finish line, in, even when it comes to the nomination. Again, I don't wish ill on anyone, per se. But who do I see on the ticket? I've said Nikki Haley. Which brings us to the next question from Linda. The Koch brothers are backing Nikki Haley. How will she do? She released her freedom plan. And it's based on MAGA extremism in disguise. Her idea of a plan is to cap, to cap work in federal jobs at five years. Basically, every five years, you've got to reapply for your job. And her agenda for the United States is to compete with China. 
And this is how much she cares about the little folk in the country. It also includes tax cuts for oil and gas companies, slashing investment in environmental and climate-focused measures, and the best, commits to raise the retirement age and cut Social Security benefits for millions of Americans. Mm. Yep, looking after the little guy, aren't they? And what irks me is they keep on calling Social Security an entitlement. Yeah, I've been paying into that since I was 16 years old. I'm entitled to it. So my feelings on Nikki Haley, even if she's nominated, so what? Biden is going to win. Yay. Now, energy balance. Will we find out any shocking revelations from the lease from the release of January 6 videos? Not really. Everyone knows what happened. I mean, it's what they're gonna reveal. I mean, you may be watching it and then you see something, something like your Uncle Charlie in the background and freak out or someone you know. <sighs> I hope not. But as far as any new revelations, no, it's just the same old crap. These things have already been gone through and gone over with a vine tooth comb by the powers that be. The real powers that be. And... I mean, with some clever editing, they can make things look like they are, but it didn't happen. It's not going to happen, okay? Now, Patricia asks, what's up with Liz Cheney? Hmm. A little thing called a book that comes out December 5th. It's called Oath and Honor, a Memoir and a Warning. And in it, she actually rips the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, saying, Johnson, quote, appeared especially susceptible to flattery from Trump and aspired to be anywhere that in Trump's orbit. Isn't that nice? And she also wrote, when I confronted him with the flaws in his legal arguments, Johnson would often concede or say something to the effect of, we just need to do one more thing for Trump, end quote. Nice. Hmm. Now, I might not agree with a lot of her politics, basically most of it, but the fact that she stood up to Trump and she's on that committee, January 6th committee, I give her credit for that. Now, there's a wonderful piece in Vanity Fair written by Bess Levin, and the title is, the most damning details from Liz Cheney's books on the GOP, January 6th, and Orange Jesus. Yes, Orange Jesus. Apparently, that's what they called him. Hmm. So anyway, read it. It's really a good read, okay? Beth Levin did a really fabulous job. So it's down below, okay? Also, speaking of books... Junebug5390. I hear MTG wrote a book. Is it a hit or a flop? I guess it'll be a hit if it comes with crayons. But listen to this. According to figures from the retail giant Amazon, the work is now the 5,243rd most popular book for sale on its website. Ranking 41st in the women's biography section. This came after it fell to the 9853rd most sold book on the site in position 71 for women biographies. So I don't know, maybe she took that million dollar PPP loan that she didn't have to pay back and bought books and got a rating on. But he get my hands on a copy. It came out November, November 21st. So here's the first five pages. This is what they look like. Okay, just kidding. Here's the real book. And also, when some people were talking about it, they were saying, uh, this should be in the fiction section, because all of this is, like, not true. This is fiction. Now, I'm sure if they asked Bobart what she thought of the book, this would be her reaction. 
Now, we were speaking about Mega Mike, you know, who was single at 25 and adopted a black boy who was 14, two years before he got married. Yeah, let that sink in. Josephine, is Mike Johnson hiding any money, hiding his money through his church? So there is no account of how much he has. You know what? I keep on looking at this. I don't know. You know, I don't think it's in a mattress or under the mattress. I doubt they have Playboys there. The son probably has them. Anyway. And then Gene Kevin asked, does Mike Johnson have or had connections with Epstein? Thank you. Actually, I never, I don't see it. No, I'm going to say no. Besides, Epstein involved with underage girls. Entertainment purposes only, just saying personal opinion, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, I got a couple questions about the wonderful Elon Musk. Lorraine, does Elon Musk really care about Israel or was his visit just for publicity and untamed spirit? What is Elon Musk to me? What is Elon up to meeting with Netanyahu? Is he using the tragic war to clean up his image? What do you think? I don't think you need to be a psychic to know this. Okay. Really? I look at it as a PR campaign. Okay. Especially after all the quote unquote anti Semitic remarks that are appearing. And then the companies that pulled back on advertising and told them they can go all F themselves. But then again, I don't think he really cares about the advertising per se, because as far as what I keep on reading, not in when I say reading, it's like, reading with cards and talking to guides. A lot of the money's coming from Saudi Arabia holding that thing up. So they need a machine for propaganda. And so even if it looks like they're losing money, Elon Musk is still making money. I don't care what anybody says. He's still making money. Now, Daisy asks, hello, what is going to happen to Twitter? I'm not calling it X. And Elon Musk. Twitter has turned into a sad, almost unrecognizable form of its previous self as a respected global town hall platform. Thank you. Yes, X marks the spot. Well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So this is my prediction for X formerly known as Twitter. The humanity and all the fans are just screaming around it. I told you. Ta -da. Now, Hannah in Florida asks, will Jared Kushner ever be held responsible for taking $2 billion from the Saudis? Speaking of the Saudis. Well, actually, they gave him a fund to oversee that's worth $2 billion, And then he get, gets paid over a million dollars a year just to oversee the fund. That's a lot of blood money as far as I'm concerned. And what I've always gotten from the guides and the powers to be and upstairs, they're not done with him. It may look like everything's peachy keen for him right now. With his little Botox face. I wonder if he knows George Santos. They go to the same doctor. But anyway, with his Botox face and... That's blood money. It's going to catch up to him. I often feel that after March 4th, once his father-in-law's trial starts getting underway, afterwards, names are going to start being revealed as the other co-conspirators. Unnamed co-conspirators. Now, I feel he's one of the names on there. But there's also a higher source that's going to take care of him, is what I'm hearing. So let them do what they do. And oh, and here's 
a future picture of Jared, I hope it helps. Mako's dad asks, thank you always for your interesting shows and content. My question is, military potential military tension is quickly escalating in the Korean Peninsula. Kim Jong-un got his spy satellites up with Russia's help. Do you see this becoming an actual conflict over there? Thank you and blessings. Mako's dad. Kinsamida. Thank you. Um, to answer your question, Anyo. No. It's like sword rattling. Again, theater of the absurd. That's all this is. Um, I don't see where Kim Jong-un is going to do something really, really stupid. He just likes, he's like a little child, petulant child. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to set your house on fire. Right. Well, we're going to put the gasoline on you before you set the fire. So anyway, then again, he pees himself. He put himself out. Anyway, so, Anyo, I don't see it happening. It's always tension, but again, theater of the absurd. Now, Mars 9953, stock market. Can you do a check on the stock market? Do you see a distinctive drop, crash, from now to summer 2024? If so, how long do you think it will take to recover back to current values? I don't see it. I'm, believe me, I'm the first one to say, you know, run for the hills if, if I see something. But I'm not seeing this. I actually feel the stock market is going to even out. And especially as we get into the end of the first quarter of 2024, again in March, when I feel the housing and everything else is going to get better, interest rates are going to get better. And I also feel that once people start seeing the writing on the wall with Trump, you're going to see some changes in the, in the news media. And so right now, depending on who you're watching, it seems like everything is doom and gloom. It's like the, the last scene of um, Dr. Strangelove or How I Fell in Love with the Bomb, whatever the name of the title is. It's not that. Okay, bombs will not be bursting off in air. Or atomic bombs. Okay. And Nancy asks, will the interest rates to purchase a home drop next year? I just said that. Yeah, actually. Also, will the child tax credit come back? Yes. In 2025, I would say as we get to spring of 2025, the tax credit, will the child tax credit will come back and be taken care of, as well as a lot more student debt. And this is when the Democratic Congress gets to work on the dream, dreamers. Okay? A lot of changes coming up, people. Positive, good change to help humanity. Keep the Republicans in. Why? Why? Okay? So yes, the tax credit will come back. Interest rates will be going down. We'll get the dreamers taken care of on their path to citizenship, which they deserve, in my humble opinion. And also your student debt loans. Okay? Got a lot to look for. But in order to get there, what are my three favorite words? Vote, vote, vote. It's one thing to predict all this stuff. It's another, you are in charge to make it happen. Okay? So do it. Vote. Again, as many cast sets would say, oh, come on, you can do it. Now, I had a couple of questions on Harry and Meghan. Do you think Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will ever move back to England? Another one. Will Prince Harry and Meghan Markle ever reconcile with the royal family? 
first of all, I always see them having a residence here in California. But I do see them eventually having a residence in England. Also, as far as reconcile, I do feel as the children grow older, there will be reconciliation. It's not going to be a hallmark moment, per se, but they will be civil. I don't feel there's animosity. I don't feel anybody's going to be selling each other out to the tabloids on Fleet Street. But I'm also feeling that things will change when King Charles, that's hard to say, when King Charles is about to cross over. I feel that's when Harry and his brother, William, come to terms. Okay? So, that's the way I see it. Entertainment purposes only. But God bless them all. Now, Anna Schaefer, do you see any serious weather events this winter for the U.S.? Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Just like there have been extreme weather conditions in the summers, why wouldn't it be the same for the winters? I feel the Midwest is going to have some really cold spells with some pretty interesting snow drifts, snowfall. So my suggestion, for whatever it's worth, if you're in one of those areas, get a generator. I mean, they have the ones they sell that are solar powered. Do whatever you want. But I would suggest getting a generator just in case. Just like I have my earthquake kit here. In the event that something happens, you gotta be prepared. So be prepared. Stock us on some food. Yeah, it's okay. You can do it. And if I'm wrong, it's peace of mind. Okay? Now, in the last show, I had talked about copper, the benefits of for empaths and sensitive people to put copper in their pockets. Well, copper pennies, actually, is what I suggested. Or copper in the body, because the energy from people gets tossed, and as little receptors, we pick up their energy. Like a radio, picking up every radio station at one time, you explode. That's why sensitive people in highly... Sense of people and um, empaths. It's very difficult to be in a, a crowded room unless you're shielded and protected. And that's what the copper's for. The energy gets tossed, it goes to the copper like a lightning rod, gets absorbed, and gets grounded, does not go into you, it does not become a part of you because it's not supposed to. Now, I had one question here from Lilac. Um, hi, Arthur. As per your last video, in, is magnetic copper good or should empaths use regular copper? Thanks for all you do. You're quite welcome. In all honesty, whatever feels, whatever chips your sugar, whatever floats your boat, whatever you feel comfortable with. You know, I do know people that wear copper bracelets and copper jewelry and stuff like that. And like I said, I, I was in Tokyo running around with copper socks on. And, uh, and it worked. But any kind of copper. Okay. And and people say, yeah, but there's there's no copper in the penny. There's still copper there. That's why three or four. The older, the better. You know, why not? Try it. And Lisa Ann also asks or suggests regarding copper. Did you know you can shine it with Worcestershire sauce? Just sprinkle it on and let it get all the all sauced up for a little bit, and the copper will come back in beautiful red. I believe it is anti antibacterial and antimicrobial. Sorry, as well. Pretty awesome stuff. However, I did not know the other wonderful things about it. That you commented and mentioned. 
Well, there's lots of ways to clean copper. However, when it comes to copper coins, well, actually lemon juice does work too. But if it's a coin collector's coin, they will kill you. You'll need a bail bondsman because well, my, my dad was a coin collector. And I remember as a little kid, I mean, looking at these dirty little coins and they're on the table. And so I went to the kitchen and just got some under the counter. I think it was comment and vinegar or something. And I was about to put all his coins, clean all his coins for him. And at that moment, I realized that my real name was don't do that. Because that's what I was always told as a child. Don't do that. Uh, because it would take away the gook, but it was also take away the value of the coin. So if you're touching coin collector's coins, don't shine them up. Okay. <sighs> it's already December 1st, December 2nd, when I'm taping this. Can you believe it? But listen, thank you for staying by with my side. Thank you for all the support. It really means a lot to me. So please like, share, and as always, subscribe. And I love your comments. In the meantime, keep an eye out for my upcoming guided meditations. I'm running behind. Something new and different for me. But the next guided meditation is Unleash Your Creativity, followed by the remixed and remastered Winter Solstice. That should be going up on the 15th of December. All right? And also, if anyone's interested in a private reading with me, I originally offered our readings for 60 minutes, but after a lot of requests and a lot of notes, I now offer a half hour readings as well. So simply go to my website. It's, it's listed below. But also it's ArthurEaseYourMind.com. And there's a blue button that says book an appointment and take it from there. All right. So, oh, I had another friend. Why aren't you on Instagram? Why aren't you on Twitter? I'm not going to go on X. I mean, I have an account there. I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of it. As far as Instagram, yeah, I'm going to start putting stuff, more and more stuff up on Instagram. Basically, the stuff that you see in my comment section. Nothing really new. Just going to put it up there, too. All right? So basically, when I announce guided meditations and when I'm doing shows with other people and things of that nature. So thank you for stopping by. I always say you guys mean the world to me, but you really do. Because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. And I appreciate it. You have no idea. So take care of yourself. Take care of others. Put out that most benevolent outcomes and all the white light, purple light, whatever color light you want. And send that out to the world. And make sure you get all those dark nook and crannies. So that the people that don't get it, eventually get it and get the light. All right, people, I love you all. You do mean the world to me. So again, take care of yourself. Take care of others. Have fun. And as always, stay amazing. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.